so that love, the vibration of love, becomes a state of being. And we have to do this um, on every single layer of our inner children, which are our subconscious. We have many, many different layers, subtle layers of our subconscious, and each one is connected to another gateway, another inner child, a guardian of our Akashic memory. And I really wanted to get this video out because I wanted to share this miraculous unfolding with you. Um, I'm just loving the way that this video series is coming together in this really beautiful organic way where it seems like I'm simultaneously um, being guided on this journey in my own reality so that I can share it with you guys as some kind of reference point or almost like a validation for this journey and how magical and miraculous this journey can be. So the it was the full moon, right, where I got through some clarity on um, the next layer of my inner child that I was to release by jumping off that waterfall. So it was the day after, literally the day after I received that clarity. And um, we went down to the river here and I go down to this river many, many times every week. Sometimes I'll go down there daily. Sometimes I'll go down there multiple times a week, but I spend a lot of time at this river. It's beautiful, it's pristine, um, there are natural water swimming pools connected to this river. It's just a place of tranquility and um, purification. It feels very timeless down there. When I'm down there, I um, it's like all my cares, all my worries, all my concerns, they don't exist down there. It's a very, um, it's a place out of time if that makes sense. So it's my special place. And anyway, so I got through the clarity of what I needed to do to um, perform that ceremony, um, jumping off the waterfall with that intention. And then we went down to the river and it was like another aspect, another layer of reality opened up to me that I couldn't see before. And I started to notice all of these ancient ruins down there, all of these rock formations with engravings and various aspects of ruins down there. Um, it was really, really profound and really, really miraculous. And then I received the message to share this with you guys as this is such a beautiful representation and example of this video series, right? Falling in love with myself, the micro shifts of miracles. And it was an instantaneous manifestation and alignment, attunement to that kind of miraculous experience where we receive a new perspective, a new alignment, a new experience of harmony and Akashic communion and throughout this series I've referenced and I will continue to reference the inner child because as we go deeper and deeper as I've, I've explained with the inner child we move through different doorways and each of the inner children that has maybe been holding on to trauma and fear each of those inner children, they are gatekeepers of our Akashic records, our Akashic field of our divine soul. And so each holds keys. Um, and as we unlock these keys, 
reality itself will begin to open up and reveal different layers to us to help us comprehend reality in a new updated way and so I just wanted to share that with you it's super fun and I've actually received guidance to go down to the stones which I'm going to be doing this week and I'm going to be going and opening up a communication with those stones um, like everything in this reality everything is energy right everything is information and as we unlock those sensitivities that are innately within us all that are innately connected to our inner children as we unlock and activate those sensitivities we're able to read and commune with all aspects of reality all aspects of gaia's living library and this has been very interwoven with my journey as i've been guided to heal my mother wound ultimately i've cultivated a very deep connection with the divine mother and with mother nature and um and being able to commune and also receive insight and messages from nature whether it's stones or um, sacred sites ancient artifacts like that or whether it's flowers um, or plants or crystals or animals whether it's water or air or fire or earth right we're all able to receive that information when we have unlocked and integrated our inner children so i just love that and i had to share it with you i had to come on and do this video because i'm so excited and it feels like i'm being guided on this journey to go and commune with the stones and to receive um some messages from them that i'm going to continue to share on this video series so it just felt like i wanted to update that and just share with you as well part of this journey part of this journey as we do commit and um, learn how to be able to um, hold a space for our inner children so that they feel safe enough to um, express themselves and ultimately come back into wholeness and oneness with our adult version of us um, when we know how to do that it that's when we attune to miracles and that's why this video series is called falling in love with myself the micro shifts of miracles um so for me this journey definitely has been um a long initiation process and i mentioned before um, a little bit about my personal journey with um, experiencing abuse as a child and this is actually something this video series as I said before it's teaching me as well it's teaching me to show up in a new way um, I don't normally reference my childhood I don't normally share these stories because I made the conscious decision a while ago to um, not over identify with that childhood experience i've created um and i've anchored and i've ground into an identity that is beyond that story however it is that story that childhood story that experience that i had growing up it again it was the gateway for me to move into a deeper state of divine embodiment and divine exploration and i'm a big believer as well in inspiring others to step forth in their vulnerabilities so it's also this beautiful process of me creating this video series that is completely guided um i'm just receiving kind of clarity and downloads as to what i am to share with you guys but as i'm doing this i'm also being asked to um, expand my own limitations and um, become more vulnerable in my truth 
so to first of all inspire you to do the same um, but secondly I think if I'm going to be showing up and talking and guiding about reparenting process that I have been on for a very long time I think it's important for me to reference uh, my childhood experience um, at least on a certain degree so that uh, other people can understand where I've come from and my journey of growth and what it has taken me to get to the place I am now. Um, I've begun to open up a little bit more about it in the recent months and um, I do have people reaching out to me and messaging me and sending me emails and they will often be surprised when they hear the level of abuse that I experienced as a child because I have grown so much. I have um, found a new identity that is not rooted in that struggle, that suffering, that trauma. And the truth is we don't actually need, have needed to have an abusive childhood. We might not have experienced any kinds of abuse. Um, or anything like that, right? But here's the thing, so, and I believe this with many, many people who have experienced um, abuse, whether, no matter what it is, um, they are often the people that are here to be uh, master teachers and master guides to support others who may be carrying trauma that is hidden. It is um, not so obvious to them because maybe they did have uh, a seemingly beautiful childhood with beautiful, caring, loving caregivers, right? Because we're so sensitive and vulnerable, especially when we're the, that infant child, um, we may have just received a trauma imprint from our external environment. We may have picked up um, on some fear or panic whilst we were inside the mother's womb. Um, we absolutely can hold epigenetic imprints from our ancestral bloodline. Um, or maybe it's just the way that we interpreted an experience with a caregiver who didn't mean to cause us any pain or suffering or trauma whatsoever. It's just the way that we experienced something. So I think that's important to mention. We don't need to have had a very traumatic experience. Those of us who have, I believe that we received a master's degree in trauma, in being able to um, perceive the human psyche in that way, to be able to interpret and analyze um, certain aspects of that process so to help guide and illuminate others who may have had a seemingly um, easy and straightforward and beautiful and wholesome and loving childhood right so I find that within myself I'm able to pick up on um, subtleties and hidden elements of people's trauma that they're not able to recognize themselves because I've had such a pronounced experience and I've had to really go in with the microscope through all of the different aspects of my childhood abuse. So to understand it and heal it within myself, I'm able to recognize it in others where they maybe have missed it. And I'm going to share a little bit more about this because the next video that I'm going to create is a meditation for you guys. And I want to give a little bit of a background on this meditation. It's kind of a master key in a way. Um, it's to help us really to ground into the aspect of our soul that has always remained pure and untouched. It is eternally free from pain and it is eternally free from suffering and trauma. And so I'm gonna go into that a little bit. Um, it became apparent that there was an aspect of me that I was able to tap into that was free from this suffering. And as I began, uh, as I began to recognize that, 
I realized that this is within each and every one of us, right? And this is um, a gift that I can share as a guide based on my own experience to help others to not only find that seed uh, within them, this pure seed of creation, this pure, untouched innocence, um, not just find it, but also to really ground and to begin to identify with that aspect of themselves. And so I began to, of course, just process and look back in hindsight over um, a lot of the different chapters of my healing journey. And, you know, it's, it's funny because I was always told by psychotherapists, as I said in previous videos, for those of you who may not have seen those previous videos, um, I went through many, many years and many different therapists and the feedback that I would get commonly from the therapists would be that I was an anomaly, that they didn't understand why I was functioning based on the amount of um, trauma that I had experienced. So the trauma that I experienced, I'm not gonna go into too many details in this video, but there are obviously many different layers of trauma and my soul ultimately chose to experience uh, quite a high level of um, trauma. It, I would almost call it in certain points of my childhood, it was, um, emotional and mental torture. So I won't go into too many details of what exactly um, I went through, but um, it was a really, really high level of emotional uh, abuse, neglect, and um, in some ways it was torture. So I went on this big journey of healing and I started, as I said in previous video, with a mainstream kind of um, therapy and antidepressants and I would receive this feedback from the therapist and they couldn't understand why I was functioning. You know, the, the level of abuse that I received as a child, they said that I should not be really able to even like get out of bed in the day or like the fact that I was even able to you know, be a functioning person in the in the reality and have a job and have relationships and friendships and things like that. That was always something that shocked the therapists. And um, it, it's taken me a long time to actually realize why that was. And there are many different aspects of why that was. But just to kind of keep this video kind of brief and as an overview today, I began to recognize that there was an aspect of my soul that I was able to connect with um, and to hold on to. And this connection to source that was unbreakable. And so, this is within each and every one of us. Um, the reparenting process and this healing journey um, is all about returning to that purity, that innocence, that um, embodied aspect um, where we can be a conduit from, from the source in every moment. We are, we remember, we know that we are a part of source. Uh, a child of source and a conduit for source um, eternally in a co-creational relationship with source. And so, of course, as we begin to not only remember this consciously, okay, because the conscious mind is just 5% of us. So we need to, what we need to do is we need to take this remembering from a conscious level and we need to ground it through the many, many layers of our subconscious. We need to really um, ingest this so that it becomes our truth on that subconscious level, right? Because we can consciously, um, we can consciously choose 
to hold the vibration of love during our healing process. And that is until we are kind of healed, um, love, the frequency of love, the emotion, the frequency of love, it is actually a choice that we have to make, right? We have to make that choice that we are going to choose love rather than fear until that choice becomes so integrated and we actually have done the journey, the healing process and the journey of genuine, sustainable, long-term he healing. Um, that choice, that resonance and vibration of love that we have chosen, it begins to embed within us so that it actually becomes a state of being. So that love, the vibration of love becomes a state of being. And we have to do this um, on every single layer of our inner children, which are our subconscious. We have many, many different layers, subtle layers of our subconscious, and each one is connected to another gateway, another inner child, a guardian of our Akashic memory. And as we begin to do this, the Akashic memory of our soul will begin to uh, download into us and it will begin to reveal itself and echo out um, into our external circumstance. So this is why it is true, you know, when we, um, when we begin to really heal, our external reality will begin to reflect our internal reality. So for instance, like I'm here right now in the middle of the jungle and um, I have a very, very intimate connection with the Divine Mother because I have been on this journey of um, reparenting myself and re-establishing my connection with the Divine Mother. I have um, ingested that experience on quite a lot of deep cellular levels, on quite a lot of deep subconscious levels, right? I've been working with my inner child to reparent and reconnect to the Divine Mother and the Divine Father for many years now. And so yes, it has begun to echo and mirror in my external reality, which um, supports that embodiment, um, where I am able to have a heightened um, experience of communication, of communion with the land and um, the elements and the elementals and the elemental aspects of my own soul, right? Because they have come um, integrated through the subconscious and now they kind of remain in a sustainable way, right? In my auric field. That is what happens when we go through this journey, when we begin to attune to the true mother, the true father, when we begin to reparent and those subconscious layers begin to believe um, in that connection. Um, and they begin to remember it and embody it and embrace it in every moment, then we begin to um, where these parts of ourselves, these energetic parts of ourselves, and um, we begin to wear them in more of a tangible way. They are not so weighed down and hidden. And so I think that's a really good way to look at this process. It's like we're beginning to bring to the surface that which has been hidden. These aspects of us, of source and of reality, of oneness, the oneness that we are in this universal experience. So that kind of brings me back to the point of this um, this video, or at least the, the reason why I'm so excited to share this journey with you, and that is how these ancient ruins showed up. Of course they were there before, right? Or were they? That's a whole philosophical conversation for another time. But it was only once I had begun to move into this next um, chapter of my infant child healing um, in this way, in this ceremonial way. And I'm so happy that I'm able to document it because um, 
I think it just makes it a little bit more playful and a little bit more fun as well and definitely a little bit more inspiring when you can actually journey along with my journey as well as me just kind of creating content and guidance um, in that way. It's almost like an, an, an enmeshment, if that's the word that I'm looking for. It's all kind of um, unifying into this oneness experience that we are moving into as a collective, right? This is actually the true nature of telepathy. Telepathy in its truth is not really about being able to read each other's minds. It's being able to attune to the universal mind and therefore we all are receiving the same information, the same guidance, the same um, experience is being downloaded to us because we are attuned to the cosmic mind, to the cosmic heart, actually. Um, and that is because telepathy, that gift of oneness, activates within us when we have begun to heal the heart. And of course, how do we heal the heart? we begin to heal and reparent our inner children. Truly, this is for everybody. This video series and this topic of reparenting is for absolutely everybody incarnated on this planet because every single um, complexity, drama, block, limitation, every single problem that we may experience is connected to our inner children. Um, so it's just really re-familiarizing ourselves with those aspects and inviting them to begin to express themselves, to communicate with us so that we can then take them on a journey of reparenting back into wholeness, back into oneness, that then in turn, we as a whole begin to experience more oneness with um, our external reality, with our external connections, relationships, friendships, um, but also with Earth and Gaia communion. So I'm going to leave that here. The next video, as I said, is going to be based on, um, it's actually going to be a guided meditation. Um, I'm going to bring through a guided meditation based on um, helping you to reconnect with that pure, untouched part of your soul um, that is free from suffering, that is free from trauma. Because when we get to that very core seed, and I always see it as a golden seed, when we get to that very golden, pure seed of our soul, um, that seed actually has only grown through the suffering and through the pain and through the trauma. It's actually the outer, outer shells and outer layers of our Akashic field that hold on to the memory of certain stories and cycles. Okay, so I think this is also a good perspective because I hear a lot people say that they are holding on to a trauma on a soul level. And I think, um, because this series is the micro shifts of miracles, right? Those micro shifts always start with perspective shifts. We're always one perspective shift away from a miracle. We're always one perspective shift away from a quantum leap, aligning to a whole new vibratory experience and paradigm and timeline. It is only one perspective away. So the perspective that I would invite if maybe you have been believing or feeling that you are traumatized on a soul level, I would invite you to actually uh, begin to remember there is a pure seed that is always untouched, untarnished, un unharmed um, by any experience, no matter how traumatic, um, no matter how cosmic and galactic and multidimensional the trauma that you experience, that seed is it will always remain pure. It was it will always remain your God seed, untarnished. Um, so I would just explain to you quickly, you know, well, how do we, you know, reincarnate with 
karma from other lifetimes. Yes, absolutely. But this is more of like an imprint um, of an experience of a story that maybe needs completion. And that is held in the outer layers of our Akashic field. It's almost just like imprints and information. Um, it's not really, we, we as a human, we as a human will um, experience it maybe as trauma, right? But on a soul level, it is just an imprint. It is just an imprint, it is just a story, and it is an experience so to help you grow. So that pure seed in the very center of your Akashic field, um, if I can give you that visual, right? So you have this, your God seed, this golden seed in the very center, and then all of the different layers of your subtle bodies can hold imprints, they can hold, um, residue of experience if you did not he, um, come to a resolution in, a, in another lifetime, right? And this is very interesting because we are actually in the culmination lifetime now where all traumas and all stories will begin and um, have begun and are condensing into um, like one unified timeline and one unified experience because it's time now to collapse all of the um all of the timelines that are connected to trauma so this time this lifetime we've all come in with a big mission and a big purpose right and that's why um this is the ascension this is planetary ascension right so we've come here to collapse all of those timelines and to release all of this residue and as we release all this residue in the aura in the um outer layers of the aura and the akashic field um we begin to access that that god seed that is pure and untouched so that is what the meditation i'm going to share with you it's going to help you to reconnect to that god seed and help to just be in the energy so that you can build a trust and a faith that no matter how hard your experience is now or has been in the past um no matter your story no matter your struggle no matter um what your life experience has been um you can begin to ground into that place of safety and stillness it's a place of freedom. It's a place of complete liberation. Um, it is complete freedom from suffering and complete freedom from all fear and self-limitation. So as we begin to ground into that, we begin to um, find it easier to navigate um, the, re the reparenting process. So I hope that makes sense and I hope that's given you some um, clarity and some inspiration today and I am super excited to be back um, with the meditation but also um, some more insights into my journey as I'm being guided um, through this next gateway of initiation into my Akashic field as I begin to commune with these ancient ruins um, here in Costa Rica so I'm really excited to share that with you guys as well. So I'm sending you so much love and I'll be back very soon with the next video. If you resonate with this content and feel like I might be able to help you in your journey, I have just opened up my online mentorship again, where I can help you work through blocks and limitations that may be showing up in your life. You can also join me in Costa Rica for a private in-person one-on-one stay as well as my group retreats that are all based on empowering your divine expression and embodiment. Please find all the links and further details in the description box below this video and you can also book a free 30-minute consultation with me to see how I can support you.